Welcome to Social Genius, brought to you by Drunk on Social, where we help you stay ahead of social media trends, share the latest news, and highlight the strategies that are working to help you grow your business. Now let's join our hosts, Tristan and Jeff, in three, two, one. If you still look at TikTok or think that TikTok is dancing and lip syncing and singing, boy, you are way behind the times. Uh, because TikTok has evolved, I there are more financial planners and and professionals putting out high quality short form content for their business, and it's TikTok that has changed every other platform. And so I'm not telling you that you have to go all in on TikTok, but it is the place where you'll probably find the most growth in terms of an audience, in terms of viewership. That doesn't necessarily equate to business. Here's what I suggest. Remember what I said. I'm standing by what I said. Instagram cornerstone, connect it to Facebook. Those are your most important ones. Once you build a cadence, once it gets once you it gets easier and creating content's easy, guess what you should do? Start multiplying that same content over to TikTok. Start multiplying that content over to LinkedIn. Um, and so let me start there. That's where I want to, I'm done. I'm I off love my that, man. I mean, I honestly thought that TikTok was for losers, but you're convincing me other. <laughs> I'm joking. Dude. No teens. Right, I mean, it was, it was for teenage girls in the beginning, but that was like four years ago. It's way beyond that now. Yeah. Here's the key niche down to expand. Isn't that the craziest thing, Jeff? Wouldn't you think it's like the opposite? Yeah, but it's not, it's actually the way you want to grow. It's, it's the only way to grow right now. You're going to niche down and you're going to realize that you should have been doing this for a much, much longer time. Uh, we're going to skip through these. These are numbers. They've, they've, they've just surpassed everything that people would imagined uh, would happen with TikTok. Um, again, I'm going to skip through this just so that we go through the good stuff because I know Jeff's going to share his screen on this. Um, but here, take the picture of this, please. Here are the six major trends that you need to watch out for this year when it comes to TikTok. And I'm going to read through them really quick, and I'm going to ask you which one you're going to be focused on. Long video, believe it or not, is now being preferred, which is amazing. Green screen trending music we use often. You'll see some of our videos that have blown up. Uh, we shop with TikTok. Unfortunately, Jeff and I don't have anything to sell yet. I hate, uh, I hate that feature. But it's blowing up. Yep. Live video matters for growth uh, more than you think. Stories. I don't use stories as much, but it's a big thing there. And use text on your videos. I think it's more of a tactic uh, than a trend. But out of these six, which one are you going to be using? Jeff, if you look at these, which one are you going to be focused on for 2024? And then I'll tell you which one I'm focused on. Uh, for me, it's live, but I'm going to preface that by saying I have a huge engaged audience and i have to get more live to continue to grow that audience that's not going to be for most of you though okay, um, wait I'll, hold on if if i weren't you which one would you say we should focus on them if we didn't I mean, have a honestly uh two probably because it, even long video that's for that's for like influencers that's for creators like me that's for people that are making money at it I think it's, and by the way, when we say long, it's over a minute. However, um, the TikTok is now going to start allowing up to 30 minute videos. And the reason they're doing that is to compete with YouTube. But I don't know that I'm going to go that route, Tristan. So, I mean, I think, I think for a beginner, TikTok really is more of just an extension of what you're already doing in the other places. And, and, you know, I mean, I, I'm going to share an example here because TikTok is the reason why I've, partnered and opened a brokerage in a geographic area. TikTok. I mean, let me say that again. It's the reason why I opened a BAM brokerage. Like if you'd asked me three, four years ago that would TikTok be the reason why I did that, I would have said, you are high and whatever you're smoking, give me some of that. Um, and it's because uh, I've, I've won an audience. Now I've since expanded my TikTok to YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and everywhere, but it all started with TikTok, which is, I mean, it's kind of mind blowing to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's crazy, crazy good. Dude, I love I love seeing that growth, and I think a lot of people misunderstand uh, TikTok because they think that it's still what mm -hmm. six years ago, five mm 
five years ago when it was just all dancing. So when you're looking at the opportunity with TikTok is, again, going back to what we started with, is the idea of building communities around a topic, around topics. And if you look at what Jeff has done, which we'll jump in, uh, but if you look at what Jeff has done with the Ozarks, you can duplicate that with anything that you're doing. And it doesn't have to be area specific. It could be idea specific, meaning if you love dogs, if you love a specific breed, if you love talking about parks and going to parks in general, if you love food, I mean, look how many food places have blown up. If you love real estate and helping people specifically buy certain types of homes, or you look at historical homes, there's so much you can do here. And the idea of TikTok has come down to niching down to expand. And that has been the key. Um, we were talking to, I don't know if Amber's on here. Uh, you know, Amber Ortega, yeah, uh, Jeff, but she jumped into our prospecting call. We have a prospecting call uh, at on Thursdays. And I go, who are you calling, Amber? She's like, well, I had a video on TikTok go viral and we had uh, we had over a million views on it. I was trying to find the video. Um, and she says, it was just about me talking about a specific type of loan. And she's out of New Mexico. And I said, okay. And she says, I'm following up with those people that just never got back to me. Uh, by the end of 45 minutes of prospecting, she, um, she, wait, is she here? Oh yeah. Uh, Beth, she did share that video. Uh, she had, she had had two of those people asked to get pre-approved at the end of 45 minutes. And this is an old video of people she hadn't reached that she had already talked to and closed some of. So I want you to rethink the ability to grow your business with TikTok. Uh, that's yeah. one misunderstanding. You um, know, Jeff Tristan, a lot of people have asked about niching down. And you know, you know, so this is what I tell all of my students is that the, the, the hardest part with social is, first of all, we had it all wrong. We've been doing it all wrong for the most part. Not everybody, but generally speaking, we have been. And and so when you basically, quote unquote, start over, you know, the advice that I give people is that you've been hearing from coaches and social media experts that you need to niche down. What, but that's kind of flawed advice because the truth is you don't get to choose your niche. I didn't choose my niche. My audience chose my niche. And so the the problem is, which makes this a little bit harder, is that when you're trying to find your niche, it means you got to throw all kinds of shit up against a wall to see what sticks. And yeah. which is which is which is a detriment to your social growth because you're going to confuse the algorithm. And and so the reason why you want to niche down is is a because it trains the algorithm and teaches the algorithm who to show your content to. But if you go into this and say, I want my niche to be first time home buyers. I want my niche to be, you know, people, you know, whatever it is, real estate related. There was a bunch of ideas I've seen floating around. And then you keep posting about that stuff and it goes nowhere. That's your audience telling, I don't care and I'm not interested. And then guess what happens? The algorithm, the platform suppresses you. And then your content is getting about this much viewership. You might have two, three, four, five thousand friends on Facebook, and this many, you can't even see it, are seeing your content. You know why? Because the point of every social platform is to do what? Keep the user on the platform. So the platform rewards those of us who get the most engagement because we are servicing Facebook, servicing Instagram, because we're holding attention. When you're posting crap that nobody cares about, and you wonder why your content doesn't get any engagement, it's because the algorithm doesn't like you. And so that's why you got to start throwing up against the wall. Going back to Hector's question, you got to throw that stuff up there because we want to be everything to everyone, but we all know that doesn't work. You have to focus on us community. You have to focus on pickleballers. You have to focus on gardeners you have to focus on the things that you're and this is why tristan and i have been saying forever like don't make more work for yourself what are you already doing what already defines you as a human and just start turning the camera on yourself more often while you're doing it and see what resonates with people when when uh, we talk about lake of the ozarks folks tristan knows the story very very well because we've been talking about it for years my tiktok was 
my life, personal, social media tips, video tips, some Lake of the Ozarks. It was just a mishmash of all kinds of stuff. And guess what? After about two years of doing this, I it just like dawned on me one day, dude, nobody cares about anything but Lake of the Ozarks. And I'm like, that's it. I'm done with everything else. I'm going, I'm niching down on this geographic area. And ever since then, I've just grown and grown and grown. I've been doing it for, I started August of last year. So it's almost a year and a half. After the first month of niching down and changing my channel to Lake of the Ozarks Lifestyle, I got a message. I started mid-August, September 15th. I got a DM on Facebook from somebody in Colorado, the Lake of the Ozarks is in Missouri, that said, hey, you're the Lake of the Ozarks expert. We're thinking about buying there. Where do you recommend? Mind you, I never posted one thing about real estate, not one thing. But guess what? This viewer deemed me as the expert, the resident expert, the person who knows where he should look. And he looked to me. He didn't look to the real estate agents throwing out all the garbage all over the other platforms. He looked at me. And then it was that moment that I was like, dude, I didn't expect this to happen so fast. I'm all in. And now here I am a year and a half later, Christina even said, I get a lot of free shit. Not only do I get free shit, that's not why you do it. I get paid by the people that create the free shit to promote the free shit that they sent me. And we've sold real estate and I started a brokerage and I'm attracting agents to that brokerage. And so it's, and I'm a year, I'm less than a year and a half into this journey. And I don't know where it's going to go. Check back with me a year from now. Check back for me two years from now. I, here's my goal. I want to have number one market share at the Lake of the Ozarks. That's a big goal because there's a lot of old hats that have been at the real in real estate down at that market. And that's my goal. My goal is to win and then preach it from the mountaintops to all of you that this is how this can work if you just commit to it. Soapbox, over. Oh, I like that, dude. Good job on getting on your soapbox there. For for you that are wondering um, the different age groups, YouTube has the widest range. Um, they cover the most uh, young, very like babies, uh, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, all the way up to older. Um, so YouTube has the widest range for sure. Facebook is definitely on the older side. Uh, most of the people on Facebook own a home. If you're going for the real estate side of things, multiple homes they own, um, IG and TikTok have the younger ages. LinkedIn is the professional, right? They usually have uh, a career or they've had great jobs, multiple jobs and X, believe it or not, has a wide range as well. Um, Younger, uh, getting a lot younger, which is great for them, and uh, older. Uh, X tends to be a lot more like LinkedIn, where that has a lot of professionals and a combination of YouTube. So I know there was a question of that, and I wanted to target that first. Can I can I remind everyone, too, that you are watching, and it's not me, so you're watching like the OG of of the of what it means to succeed with a Facebook group too. I mean, this isn't just about, you know, I know we're on TikTok right now too, but I mean, what Tristan did by building a lab code, like a lab code agents, I mean, that's why he is a freaking icon in the industry. I mean, legitimately. And and I think he would say it, like you would have never gained what you've gained over the last seven to 10 years, if it wasn't for lab code agents, you would have just been not, and I don't mean to minimize it. You would have just been a badass realtor in the greater LA area, yeah. but you gain national presence and opportunities beyond your wildest dreams. Cause if I had asked you 15 years ago, Hey, you're going to start this Facebook group and you're going to become nationally famous. You're going to become, I would argue a top five name in real estate on a national level. You would have said, hand me that pipe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Show me that. Show me that earlier. I hated Facebook. So there's, I would not have believed you. <laughs> That's, that is so funny. Yeah. Uh, very true. Let's go to, let's go to TikTok. I want to show you really quick. I'm going to show you mine and then uh, Jeff can show you on mobile so that you can see the difference. Um, this is the one I have right now. I've got multiple TikToks. We're testing different things out. You can see green screens, 1.5 million, real estate specific, 300,000, dumb junk that I'm testing, a million. Uh, more recent green screen uh, last week about real estate rates dropping, 146,000 likes. I got quite a bit of followers from that one. Um, I test things out all the time continuously uh, to see what's working, what's not. 
And I need you to be doing the same thing as you're discovering what it is that you're doing. Some of them will hit, some of them won't. Um, but like Jeff said at the very beginning of the session for TikTok, uh, if you are testing out TikTok and trying to figure it out, really green screen and trends uh, is probably the way you want to go. And then we we show you that in depth on how to do it, what to do, uh, hooks and everything. But if we did that right now, that would take probably a good 20, 30 minutes. That's why you joined Social Genius. Um, yeah. and, and let me point out too that you know, part of the problem with the perception of how we should be doing social is a lot of you are watching people like Tristan and that's not fair judgment for you. Don't compare yourself to Tristan. He owns the re the real estate space on social media. You don't. And you got to figure out what you can own on a scale that's realistic for you. If I try to be Tristan on social, I'm going to fail. Um, and I stumbled upon my niche, my niches, at, but you know how I stumbled upon them? Throwing shit up against the wall and saw what stuck. It didn't happen overnight. It took time. I just committed to this process. And for many of you, like I said, in the very beginning, that commitment needs to be about an hour a day. That's it. Like, that's it. You, but you got to get committed. And, and that's the bigger piece of this. And part of that commitment for some of you might be hiring these massive teams of me, a media team. And for others, it's going to be very DIY. And you're going, to you're going to hire us because you want to stay in this circle and you want to have these conversations every month because that's what we're doing. And so, and for others, and this is, this, this is to prove to you how non-sales pitchy we are, you can go do all this DIY on YouTube if you want. So you got to decide, do you want to be within a family of people that are collaborating? Do you want to do it on your own? Do you want to hire people? But here's the one thing I will tell you. If you think you're going to hire a social media management company and pray full, I gave him, I gave him a one, a two letter, one word answer when he asked earlier, should I pay 997 to hire a social media management company? My answer was an emphatic no, because if you're never going to find a company that can display your authenticity correctly, all they do is create consistency. That's it. And it's going to give you a consistency that fails. We've tried this. Tristan and I both have. It doesn't work. Uh, you have got to commit to being a part of the process because it's you that people are going to want to buy. And anybody on this, and I don't need you to answer if, unless you want to, how many homes have you sold comparatively because of the name on your shirt versus who you are? How many of you comparatively have sold more homes because of the name on your shirt versus who you are. And I already know the answer to the question. If there's anybody who says the name on their shirt sold them homes, you're in a, you're a unicorn. Everybody else, it's because of you as a human. That's exactly why you have to lean into being that human because people are going to buy you, not the balloon, not KW, not EXP. They don't give a crap. What they care about is working with someone on the biggest transaction of their life that they feel good to be around. That's it. Or that they can relate to. And, you know, social media just gives you an outlet to display that, that billboards never did. That's it. That's good, man. I like your soapbox tantrums. Sorry, man. I, I'm a, I'm a, I, I should, maybe I should in a second should life, a I should become a, I should a become a preacher. Maybe I should, maybe I should go into the religion field. You know what? You need a t-shirt that says, I'm also a soapbox. <laughs> Um, here's the link for Amber's video. Thanks, James. James sent it over to me. Uh, I like it. So take a look at that one. That one got her multiple transactions. Now, let me go to the last page of this. And then we'll head over. Oh, yeah. Did you want me to show my TikTok too? Just yeah, to right after this one, okay. share, share your TikTok. And then uh, we're going to go into YouTube. Here are best practices, uh, create trending content and participate in challenges. Be you, everyone else is taken. I think that was Oscar Wilde who said that. Uh, it's more key here and on YouTube than anywhere else. Uh, this is this is just it. I mean, if Jeff had, Jeff, if you had some of these great soapbox sessions on TikTok or YouTube lives, I bet you you'd do really well with them, man. Or you know what? Facebook lives in lab coats. Those would do mm. really well. You mm. would do really well in those. Okay. Uh, study... I, I, have, I have more of a tendency of pissing people off in lab coat agents. <laughs> <laughs> study other trends as you scroll. I think this is one thing we don't do. 
as as just people we just go through wildly scrolling and wasting time study others see why you're looking at a certain video see why you're spending your time re-watching it or why are you even engaging with it what stopped you in the first place and see what what inspires you from it i think we don't do that enough all right jeff yeah. go to yeah. And as I'm doing that too, I want to mention, so first of all, Nancy asked the question about how people find you and she mentions Google. Uh, if any of you are familiar with SEO, you now know that SEO is more driven by social than it is by websites anymore. Um, and your social presence, your consistency on social, because when you go Google somebody now and they have a social presence, you'll see if you Googled my name, you're going to basically be inundated with all my social profiles. And, and I dominate uh, on the Google with my name because of my dominance on social. And, and it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. So that's another reason why leaning into social is, is very important. Um, there was another comment too about, about what people, the other, you know, when, when it comes to it, I think it was about how people connect with you because you provide a solution, right? But, but here's the reality. As time continues to evolve and these Gen Zers and millennials get off their couches, get off mom and dad's couch and start buying homes, right? They don't even want to engage with you until they can stalk you first. This is just the way humans are now evolving. And, and I'm a Gen Xer and I even do that. So when I'm when I get a resume across my desk, before I even schedule an interview, I go stalk them on social because I want to get to know a little bit about them first. First, it makes me look good when I can say something personal to them. But second, I want to know if maybe they don't match with me, right? I don't know. Um, and if you don't think that the consumers as time goes on are going to continue to judge you based on your social presence before they even get to know the solution you provide, you're lying to yourself because that's where it's going. Um, and so as Tristan mentioned, now I'll segue over to YouTube, Tristan as well. Honestly, the only reason I'm showing you this mainly is just because use this as inspiration. In fact, I don't care if any of you follow me because none of you on this call are going to, are going to be my consumer uh, at the Lake of the Ozarks. And that's what this channel was dedicated for. But if you need it for inspiration, I post about 340 videos a year, almost daily. And it's just, it's just lifestyle content. And you'll see, I do green screens about events and it's all very Lake of the Ozarks centric. And I engage with my audience and I, and I, and I talk to them. I mean, and you'll see like this video, Tristan, which I shared this, um, I'll share the data. All this was, was a green screen about a bar that went up for sale. And the reason why I shared it was not because of the 65,000 views or 1300 likes or the 83 comments. It was the almost 1300 shares. And the reason why that's important folks is because that video is very centered around something happening in this geographic area. I guarantee out of those 12, 1,288 shares, every single one of them is not is somebody local is somebody that's interested in lake of the ozarks it's not people from india china los angeles miami it's local people that kind of visibility i got free marketing from 1288 people gained 101 followers and that's what i want i want to be known as the local guy because when people start thinking about moving to the lake or buying around the lake i want them to think of me as the person they want to talk to and then i can become a rainmaker to my audience Thanks for listening to Social Genius, brought to you by Drunk on Social. We are here to help you take your business to new levels through social media. Make sure to subscribe to get updates on new episodes and come join us on our Drunk on Social Facebook page. And as always, make sure you leave us a great review on your favorite podcast app. Feedback and likes are very much appreciated. 